CCO to BNSF Grain, an Amtrak Empire Builder will be passing for you. Wait for him and after the signal clears, begin your journey. I get the feeling that whoever wrote that must not have had English as the first language. Either way, yeah, hello everyone and welcome back to the Marias Pass route and train simulator. As I pointed out in the previous video, this is one of the, this is uh, an add-on with lots of BNSF branding that for the longest time was only available for sale to US customers. And since then, it has actually been used in a, a lot of um, a lot of workshop scenarios, which I have for routes that I do have, like Pacific Surfliner and um, Aurora, Aurora to Chicago. But uh, for the longest time, I haven't been able to play them due to not having this particular route. Heck, even a couple of Sherman Hill scenarios I couldn't play. I'm going to. I'm not going to miss this opportunity to get a screenshot with. Um, the Jeevo and F40s. Although I don't know what, I wonder why those headlights on the F40s are off. But anyway, um, that's nice. So it's all that's all in, uh, largely all in phase three. Although clearly a lot of these superliners are in phase two. Personally, I think phase three is the best livery. Anyway, um, so yeah, we're currently in a siding at Merriweather. Which is how far? Where is it? On the route? Oh, a lot further east. A lot further east than it was in the last video. So down there is Essex, and there's Java East. And we're up here. And well, it's clearly quite a flat. Well, almost. It almost reminds me of Sherman Hill, like the air scenery around here. Anyway, um, so we're going to take this General Electric ES44 DC locomotive about 21 miles along the line to a place called Cut Bank. But first, we have to obviously wait for the Amtrak train that's just got whizzing past to clear the signal, and then we can oops, and then we can head off. As it says, that's the Empire Builder, so that'll be more than likely be going back towards Chicago. I don't know why like, the left head out view is all the way, has the camera all the way down here, uh, down towards the back of the engine. Curious design on the, uh, on the flared radiators on the back. I thought uh, it was only the tier 4 GVOs that had that sort of, uh, that different sort of radiator. Actually, that's the point. I wonder if you can, uh, oh. It's just that standard formula where you can only have the camera position on in two sides. You can't get in a, can't get in a position where you can be in the middle of the cab and then open the door to the to walk out through the nose. Can we? Yes, we can. That's good. We've got the yellow signal so we can proceed. But of course, we have to keep an eye out for signal, cautionary signals as we go along. Now this locomotive's got about just over about 4,400 horsepower, and she is hauling. Wow, that bell is almost louder than the prime mover. No, we've got this one locomotive, and she is hauling. This she's hauling. I count. I think I counted 28 wagons, and we'll have to pick up. Uh, we'll have to pick up more of them on the way. And as per usual, the game is randomly lagging seemingly whenever it wants to. I wish I could do some. I wish I actually knew how to fix that. Where it stands now, it's quite annoying. Hello, there's a crossing. Understand in real life when these American oh, come on frame rates. From what I understand in real life, I'm pretty sure the drivers hold that last tone until they're over the crossing. There's another what is it, a pair of Jeevos heading back west. 
was whitefish. One thing's for sure is that uh, because of how long this route is, I don't think I'll be... I can't imagine I'd ever try to do the whole the full run from Shelby to Whitefish in, in one shot. So it'll probably be, something, like, probably be over four hours. Although I dare say the locomotive will probably have enough fuel to, to, do, to do the whole trip. I'm not sure what those, like, sounded, the, like, their radio conversation is all about, but it's just a, I think it's like a default sound set I've, I've heard on like the ES44AC on the Sherman Hill route, where it's like the same radio chatter sounds that are essentially played on loop, and it's a bit annoying, okay so the speed limit's gone up to 60, so we'll see if we can actually get up to that speed, because to be honest, um, I do want to try and get this run done fairly quickly, although we do just have just I think an hour to be just over, yeah, about 20.6 miles to go before we get to cut bank. This is certainly, from what I've seen of this route so far, it's certainly got some pretty con heavily contrasting scenery. Because obviously up, up here, out, just out of Merriweather, um, it's obviously very flat terrain with, well, see, almost no hills. And yet, back down the line there, or in Essex, you're right in the middle of what is it? Right in the middle of a valley. With big, t big, t uh, big tall mountains on either side of the line. Right, so that's a yellow over red. I'm not sure what, I know there's like some term for it with American signaling, but that is a subject that I know next to nothing about, to be honest. Hell, I know more about the in-cab signaling they have on the Northeast Corridor with the conventional colour light signals. But yeah, since we are uh, chasing yellows essentially, uh, I remember it's not necessarily a good idea to constantly to go at um, try and go at the speed limit, especially when you're not certain of, green, of any green signals. Although the other thing I've just realised is that since, um, since we'll have to stop at, what was it, Pardu, Pardway, Pardui, P-A-R-D-U-E, was it, Pardu, I all those attempts I've probably got it horrifically wrong. And to anyone who's more familiar with this route, you know, or even someone that lives in the area, I am I apologize. I wonder if that's like a almost like a like a native American or whatever the Indian name. It's kinda of like how Australia has uh, Aboriginal or some Aboriginal names and New Zealand has some um, Maori names for its towns and cities. Or in the case of rural Montana, basically tiny settlements. Right, so that's a 35 speed up. Well, I guess we'll find out why soon enough. That's if there's an obvious reason for it. I don't know how much more I can take of this repetitive, all these repetitive radio chatter noises. Okay, so that's yellow, that's a yellow signal. So we can keep, we'll keep, we'll keep going about 45 miles an hour for about another half a mile. And then we'll slow down to 35. Yeah, I really don't like that horn sound. I mean, I'm not an expert on uh, BNSF Jeevos, but I would have thought they'd have something like a Nathan K5LA, which is one of the few American horn types that I'm slightly familiar with. I've also heard of something called, 
for like, like you think of Wobco AA2 or like Nathan P5 or of course Leslie RS2M or RS3M. Not to be confused with the Elko RS2 and RS3 locomotives, of course. too early. That's odd. Why on earth would we be go why on earth would the uh, dispatcher system send us through on like onto one line? Wow that's loads of some glitchy mountains. But no why would I don't get why the uh, dispatcher system would send us through one crossover onto another line and then immediately back onto the other onto the other line. Right, so it looks like we've got just over, what's that, yeah, just over well, about four and a half miles, so it's spot where we have to stop, I wonder how quickly that's going to go by, hopefully no more than five minutes if we can get this thing up to 60 miles an hour. I remember that uh, before I got the last pass uh, today, um, I think like the only BNSF, the only true BNSF engines I had were part of the like those really horrible default ES44AC or SD40-2s from the US Loco and Asset Pack. So that, that's going back to like the days of Koju Rail Simulator in about 2007, I think. Except I didn't start playing train simulation until late 2013. But and back by that point, it had been rebranded as uh, Train Simulator 2014. that aside from the random and annoying yet inconsistent and annoyingly frequent lag, this route doesn't seem to be running too badly. I just hope that at some point soon I can get to a point where I'll be able to run or we're trying to work do a run and train simulator with minimal lag. And it seems to be well, the f as a whistle board. Frame rates do seem to be better in uh, TSW2. <laughs> that crossing is much further away than I thought. One thing I actually remember about some routes where like, you're able to do up to about 60 miles, where the rolling speed limit throughout the whole route is 60 miles an hour. For some reason, it's around that specific speed where the distances, for me at least, really do seem to go by faster than you think, even though this is certainly not a high-speed train doing up doing like 186 miles an hour as it speeds for the south of France on its way to Marseille. Speaking of uh, French TGV trains, and more specifically the TGV duplex, or I suppose in this case the Euro duplex, um, I remember around in October I think I put up a pretty basic video of just me driving a, I think it was a TGV Euro duplex from Karlsruhe, Germany to Strasbourg, France, and somehow that for some reason, that particular video ended up becoming, by my standards, a runaway success. Like, I think it got like a thousand views within the first week, which in my case usually just does not happen. So, um, yeah, so I don't really know why what it was about that just that basic TGV gameplay video that uh, made it go nuts in the algorithm. Or like the algorithm promoting it. That's not too bad of a scene. You got the you got the Givo with a bit of exhaust, or as the Brits would call it, clag. And then you got these farm buildings in the background. That's quite nice. Ah, okay, 
okay, so we're slowing down faster than I thought, as I can see on the, it's, I understand if you can't see it too well, but I can see on the, um, in the bottom left corner of the heads up display that we're going up at 0.0, oh, it's now 0.7% grade. Um, I know that 1% is, I think it's equivalent of 1 in 100, so I'd hazard a guess and say this grading we're on now is something like 1 in 120. Like, I really don't know how to uh, convert like grading percentages to ratio. I do generally prefer, well, I'm more used to the to measuring gradients and the severity of the gradient to, by ratio, like 1 in, uh, 1 in 40 or or in the case of the Bernina Railway in Switzerland, for a little bit Italy, 1 in 14. That's about 7%. And I remember in railroads online, you can have, when you're building, when you lay the groundwork for track, you can have gradients as steep as 10%. And I'm thinking if 7% is 1 in 14, I'd absolutely hate to think how steep 10% is. That would just be... I would even go so far as to say eye-wateringly steep. Although I remember, and I think I was watching Coast of Fan 2105's video about geared steam locomotives, and at one point he said that some of the lines that these engines would run on had gradients as steep as 10%. And I have no idea how they would have managed uh, gradients that steep. But anyway, we're coming up on Pardew. Pardew. Uh, I really do apologise, Marius. I honestly have no clue how to pronounce this place's name. I mean, the second part of it kind of reminds me of, of a, I think a place in Vietnam called Hue, which is, although that's spelt as that's HUE. And then I think if you add a Y to that, you get Huey, as in Huey Lewis. If you don't know who Huey Lewis and the news are, you're missing out. They, that certainly quite a, quite a funny, quite a fun, or dare I say, yeah, dare I say fun band. Of course, Huey Lewis was a fun man. They had songs like, uh, Oh, they had, uh, one of their songs was called Stuck With You, uh, which is off their 1986 album 4, and on one of their earlier albums, they had, which specifically the album Sports, uh, one of the songs off of that was called The House of Rock and Roll. So, right, what do we need to do? Uh, right, I th we basically have to lug forward this entire train of about 20, I think I counted 28 wagons, and then, and then stop just past the point, and then reverse into the siding to pick up these other eight wagons, and then we continue on to Cut Bank, which doesn't seem to be that far away. Oh, oh he says it's not that far away, look, it's 12 miles. Go figure. Right, well I think I, I don't, th I think I'll tr try to go no faster than 15 miles an hour for this little shunt move. Though it seems, to me it seems rather odd that you just have this, what look like grain silos or grain elevators, uh, in what appears to be the middle of nowhere. Might have to look this area, once I'm done with this run, I might have to look the area up on Google Maps to, um, just to see if it really is this remote in real life. Reminds me of the uh, Alaska Railroad and that route, the Anchorage to Sea, uh, yeah, Anchorage to Seawood route and train simulator, which is about three or four years old by now. And as well as uh, Anchorage to Seawood, I believe you also get the branch line from Portage to Whittier. Which may seem interesting because you get to go through, uh, I think, two road rail tunnels. But from what I've experienced on that line, it's actually quite boring because 
most of the time you'd be lucky if you get above be lucky if you get your engine above 30 miles an hour it's very slow going on that route which is why I don't really want to make any video any that many more or, or any more videos on that route because it's just too it's just too slow and boring and then this lag this random and inconsistent lag which is not certainly quite annoying it seems to, it seems to want to happen on every route that I go for regardless of how resource intensive it is right so with any luck the points will have changed automatically as indeed they have so obviously now you can't hear the locomotive because it's all the way down there I dare say in real life they for all I know they probably have like a um, probably have a brake man or whatever you call them that would be uh, that would possibly come down from walk down from the locomotive out to the or back to the scene of the train and then uh, and then make sure the driver stops in the right place these look like yeah these look like grain hopper cars which would make sense considering that we're right next to what I think is a some kind of grain loading facility the other thing I remember about coupling operations in train simulator is that ideally you don't want to be doing any more than three miles an hour when coupling up and that's what I intend to do here also there's the Fred or flashing rear end device I guess that I think from what I understand that's like the modern replacement for the for the old-fashioned caboose I mean put it this way when I was looking through the uh, rolling stock list um, in the scenario editor earlier well like when I was doing that little free roam thing out of Essex and onto Java East um, I saw that uh, there's no caboose included with this route it is just the the NSF ES44DC and, XB, and XBM SW1500 as well as a pretty sizable selection of freight, freight wagons although it just seems to be the same generic types that I've seen with a few other American routes like Sherman Hill which is uh, themed around Union Pacific and Miami to West Palm Beach whose freight operations are run pretty much entirely by CSX Right, so we've got about 11, basically 11 and 3 quarter miles to go until we get to Cut Bank. I remember when I was about to, just as I was about to load this scenario up, I saw that it was supposed to take about 30 minutes. Although, in my case, it'll probably be about maybe 33, 34. At least we can go up to a pretty decent speed of about 60 miles an hour for most of the way. I'm not going to go straight into full power, of course, because I think that I'm pretty sure that's something that wheel drivers generally don't do when they're travelling at low speeds. Because I think otherwise it'll potentially uh, over or like stress or over stress the couplers, and they could end up breaking. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's why they have some the ins really insanely long front the stereotypically American like the those insanely long intermodal or manifest or other unit trains they that's why they have the, the distributed power units or DPUs and if you don't know what a DPU is it's where you, it's when they have it's when the big railroads marshal like one or two locomotives at like midpoint along the train uh, they're set up so that they can be, I think the wiring is set up so that all the locomotives on the train, even the DPUs, are all controlled from the one desk, or from one driver's control stand in the front cab. And the DPUs, are, I believe the DPUs are there to ease the strain, primarily to ease the strain on the couplers. I'll see how long this train takes to go past the camera at about th at 30 miles an hour. Right, the 
Although we're probably going to get an annoying lag again. Oops. Oh well. Good mind. Right. Clock starts now. At 53 seconds. See, it's just a mix of. Um, like two of a couple of different types of rain hoppers. This just this lot. Right, so I think that was uh, 49 seconds. And yes, I, oh, I didn't use a stopwatch or anything. I did just count that or count that uh, second, the seconds as it went along. And this of course, the annoying lag struck again. Absolute pest. And it's so inconsistent as well. Like, just look at this now. It's it's so annoying. I don't remember it being this bad before, but it's like the other day when I tried driving that Lumo Class 803 from Newcastle to Darlington. And that was quite annoying with regards to constant lagging. Right, now I've got just over now I've got just over 10 miles before we get to Cut Bank. And that's as far as we it looks as though that's far as, as far as we can go today. This is what looks like the map. Is there a station? Oh there is. I didn't realise there was one. Funny how it's only you put only appear to have a platform on one side of the track. Right, what's that situation to spell there? No, it just looks like it just looks like a row of shrubs. If you'll excuse me, I'm going to have a drink of water. Not awesome. What, is this? what does this mean? Is this like 1,102? Is this like a mile post or something? If so, we're 1,102 1, miles away from where? Okay, I have really do have no idea what this post, what these posts mean. I dare say, it well, for all I know, it's probably like a BNSF, it might just be a BNSF specific thing, I honestly don't know. But yeah, since that, since we had that stop at P-A-R-D-U-E, I'm not even going to attempt to pass it anymore. I saw that, I just saw on that map early, on the 2D map, I went to check what was going on at Cut Bank. I saw that the, um, the Amtrak train that we saw at the start of the video with those two F-40s, um, that is now about nine miles ahead of us. And I think it's because of how much time we spent at P-A-R-D-U-V collecting those other wagons. So on my guess is that we'll probably end up having green signals the rest of the way. Not a lot of variety in scenery on this part of the route, to be honest. It almost looks like we're it almost looks like we're going like we keep moving along but it still feels like we're going nowhere. That looping, that van, of course, that looping, uh, that looping uh, radio chatter is still on the way. I wonder why they, uh, I'm not sure why Dovetail Wii U, actually that's a point. Um, I don't remember, I don't know for certain, but I have a feeling that this route would have come out before Sherman Hill. So 
either that or the other way around, but yeah, those crow chatter sounds that we keep hearing, they are from the, are the same as what you hear on the uh, Union Pacific GVO and the Sherman Hill Pack. Not, I should, just to clarify, I don't mean the uh, Train to World 2 version because that version, A, does not include track 3, thank you Dovetail for your stupid choices with what you do and don't include on these routes. Um, but no, the, that route does not include the DS44AC. What you, I think with, what you do get with that route is the SD70ACE and SD40-2, so all EMD power. Not like Sandpatch grade where you get um, the GP38-2 and SD40-2, but also the General Electric AC4400CW. Although saying that, well speaking of Sherman Hill, I haven't got the uh, TSW version. And I don't want to get it, to be honest, uh, simply because uh, in TSW2 at least, I honestly don't care for these routes that are wholly biased to, uh, what's this, that, like, I honestly don't care for these American routes that are uh, um, wholly biased to freight. Wait, what? I hope that's referring to a different vibrator to the one I'm thinking of. Right, I'm... Um, what does that say? Train detection system installed in the track. All track work next 30 meters must comply with procedure. Was that... no, was that 30 miles? Because obviously the Americans don't use... Uh, don't use... Uh, oh, wheel condition. I've never seen this kind of... I've never seen this sort of detail on these routes of train simulator before. So to see this sort of thing on what is actually quite an old route, it's actually it's quite quite impressive. There's like solar panel detail and everything else. I remember that um, on YouTube that uh, Danny Harmon and his distant not his distant signal channel. By the way you should you should check uh, Mr Harmon's videos out. He, actually they're very well made and certainly very well narrated on oh, by Danny himself. He is American of course. He's far more knowledgeable on these sorts of railroads than, I, than I'll ever be. I mean, I'm just some idiot that still lives with his parents. I'm just some idiot in New Zealand that still lives with his parents. Occasionally goes out to watch trains in real life. Which, by the way, are on three... In, in, this country, in New Zealand's case, our trains are on 3 foot 6 inch gauge track instead of 4 foot 8 and a half inch. But now I remember uh, that Mr. Harmon has mentioned uh, defect detectors quite a few times in his videos and I would assume that this setup that we just ran past was some kind of uh, defect detector and I would assume it's meant to like pass or like the train will go over a sensor and then it'll defect detect if um, there's anything wrong with the wagons and it'll like presumably I think it sends an automatic message back to the driver by radio of course saying whether or not there's any defects so I see we're going, basically now going down a better part of a 1 in 100 or 1% grade I think 2% is 1 in 50 speaking of 2% anyone remember Cone Pass and the three notorious runaway trains that ran, that ran off down the grade, I think 1989, 1994 and 1996. Speaking of uh, Cajon Pass, I remember that that was one of the original uh, uh, Kuju Rail Simulator era American routes. So it's just as old as like that horrible original Great Western mainline thing between London, Paddington and Oxford. feeling like that at this point, uh, this part of the route, we're actually at a very high elevation. And it's kind of like 
the area in the town of Waiuru in New Zealand where the North Island's main trunk run is past. The station itself is fairly unassuming because it's on a pretty long, it's, a, it's like the northern end of the route, a pretty long, straight section of track. But Waiuru, Waiuru is the highest point on the New Zealand Rail system, about 930 metres above sea level. I think National Park is the highest elevation of like operational railway station in the country. Well they're saying that the one passenger train that still serves that still need to serve that station, Northern Explorer, has been out of action since August August this year. Because of certain travel restrictions brought about by a certain nasty virus. A certain dodgy government that's held in on seemingly acting like abusive dictators. That's just my opinion, by the way. You can feel free to disagree, respectfully disagree. But, so I don't know why I mentioned that. But no, the Northern Explorer uh, hasn't been running since August 2021. And I have absolutely no idea when it will return. If it ever does. That note, so I'll end that range of Kiwi Rail lack of, well, the lack of main trunk passenger service by saying to Kiwi Rail that they should get the Northern Explorer back in operation again as soon as they possibly can. Just remembered, I think a lot of the sounds from this BNSF ES44DC, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they are actually re, just reused from. So either these sounds are reused from the Union Pacific ES-44 AC from Sherman Hill, or the, um, or it's the other way around, and this one came first, but I'll have to, I'll have to look into that uh, once I've exited out of the game. And it looks like we're going back to level track before too long. This part of the route is, uh, well, to me at least, it reminds me of, it certainly does remind me of parts of Sherman Hill, except the Sherman Hill route basically has no uh, greenery. This is, uh, that Most of that section between Cheyenne and Laramie in Wyoming is like, running along very really barren and almost deserted plains of the state of Wyoming, which from what I understand is one of the most sparsely populated states in the US. Well they're saying that Cheyenne is of course the stuff of legends in railway circles because I guess presumably because of its uh, historical link, historical, uh, well I guess just its history and obviously would have been, would have been a base for the map, the massive Union Pacific articulated engines like the Big Boy and Challenger, and presumably the 412-2s as well. Speaking of 412-2s, uh, one of them is preserved, number 9000. And from what I understand, she's on display at a museum in... From what I understand, uh, Union Pacific 9000 is on display at a museum in Pomona, California. At least I think it's Pomona. I know it's the pl I know it, that area is as it was where Big Boy 4014 was on display before the Union Pacific Railroad themselves brought the engine back in 2014 to much fanfare, and the local and of course that locomotive has since been restored to working order and now runs mainline excursions, and of course is and 4014 of course is now the largest working steam locomotive in the world and previously that title was held by previously that title was held by Challenger 3985 speaking of the Union Pacific Challengers I'm pretty sure only two of them have survived 3977 and 3985. I'm not 
sure why we just had that random bit of single track just there since we're now suddenly back on double track. But either way, we, yeah, as you can just about see on the uh, hut, if I can put the cursor around there, uh, we're less than a mile out from the cut roof and our stop point at Cut Bank. No, I didn't, I didn't realise this was a sizable town. It's probably one of the few sizable towns on this route. That's a point. There's the Amtrak station. The NPC is always in exactly the worst place. I think that'll do. I I remember, like speaking of Amtrak and the Empire Builder service that they run across this route in real life. Um, I remember that the station in Essex, I believe, was more of a basically just a rural, more of a rural halt than anything else. That station, I'm pretty sure you can only eat, I think you can either, oh sorry, you can only get on or off the train at that station if uh, you requested it. It's not like a, um, and we're on the wrong line. It's not like, um, oh, what is it? <laughs> it's not like, uh, It's not like most Amtrak stations where they are compulsory stops. No, I did not realise that um, points here are actually manual. Wow, those are huge silos. Oh, there's some lumber cars. Big lumber cars. Um, when I've got when this when I'm done with this video, I'll try to get it uploaded pretty quickly, or as quickly as YouTube will let me, <laughs> and then. Do a run from go oh, and then just potter around, probably just potter around for railroads online, which also has a prominent feature of like uh, lumber, like logging railroads. Although it's also got other industries as well. But no, I sometimes I sometimes forget that the. Yeah, scenario well that sometimes the points are manually operated. So I think it's set to the right track now. Go forward I think. I swear that's the same bell sound that I've heard on the Norfolk Southern DS44 AC, like the one that comes with the Norfolk Southern Coal District route. It's definitely some kind of it's definitely some kind of e bell, I think. Although it does sound a little bit more like a steel bell. Surprise, surprise, surprise. I think at some point soon I might try to if I remember or if I can find the time or if I have patience. I might try to record a video where I'd play through a scenario on a different route that does require this Marias Pass. I think in particular I might try uh, like a Union Pacific DDA 40X scenario on Sherman Hill. Although from memory none of those scenarios have purely like entirely DDA 40X haul trains. Like it's always running in tandem with like GP30s or S245s I don't remember ever seeing a scenario on the Steam Workshop where you do just where the train that you drive that you're driving is formed entirely by uh, the Centennial locomotives I just say Q457 Sounds like a CSX number if it was Right now I don't know this part of the US at all, so yeah, I'm pleasantly surprised to see that Cut Bank is a far bigger affair, a much bigger uh, town than I thought than I thought it would be. Kind of reminds me of the John Mellencamp song "Small Town." 
Although I think that was written about, I think that song was mainly about, I think it was called, I think, Seymour, Indiana, where, I think it was where John Mellencamp grew up. Hello, there's the SW 1500s. I'll try to get a screenshot of them, like the Jeevo with the switches in the background. But yeah, I just remembered that we that um, when you stop on the marker, it doesn't give you a lot of time before the scenario ends. So on that note, I would like to say thank you very much for watching. This has been essentially my second look at the Marias Pass Route Train Simulator, and I do hope to make more of them in the future if I can think of anything particularly interesting to do on this route. I might just be driving the Devos again. Or the SW 1500s. We'll have to see how it goes. And now I think I'll just uh, bring the train to a stop. For now, here at uh, Cut Bank. Yeah, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.